What's up, everybody? It's Heretic here. Welcome back after over a month of being away from you guys. Um, doing a lot of other things, uh, reflecting a bit on just kind of the way things have been going on since that massive recording run I had at the North American Intercontinental Championships, which in upload speed or in, in uh, uploads spanned almost a month all by itself. So uh, it has been a little while. The World Championships having come and gone this weekend. It was a blast to watch the streams. Uh, congrats to everybody out there who participated. And uh, today we are looking at Keiichi Nishiguchi's top eight uh, spread deck, Garbodor, Trash Lanch, and Garbotoxin, Necrozma GX, and the Tapu Koko promo. A lot of damage spread. And then Espeon EX to de-evolve things after they have taken more damage than their lower evolutions can handle to get easy knockouts. It is... It is really an interesting deck. I absolutely love seeing this. And first seed going into top eight. Unfortunately, he did not advance past top eight. Coming up short against a Galissapod Garb variant. And so, um, nonetheless, congratulations to Ray Eiji. And I apologize so badly if I am mispronouncing your name. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. I don't think I saw him on stream at all. Uh, maybe he was, and it was just when I wasn't able to watch. Maybe we were watching VGC at the time. Uh, kind of did a little flip back and forth between VGC and TCG streams. So, um, definitely a lot of fun to watch. And so, we are going to get right into this list. Now, of course, everybody's favorite card, said no one ever, uh, Garbodor. Trash Lanch. We've all been around this since it came out in uh, Guardians Rising back in May. Uh, one Psychic, 20 damage times the amount of item cards in your opponent's discard pile is ridiculously overpowered in the mid to late game in particular. Acid Spray, um, it's the secondary attack. You add a double colorless to that one Psychic. 70 damage with a coin flip of heads discarding an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Just a super powered version of the Acid Spray on the Trubbish that it, that it, it uh, evolves from. So we run three of these Trash Lanch Garbodors, one copy of the uh, Garbotoxin Garbodor, which with a Pokemon tool attached, shuts down all other abilities in play. Such a brutal card in certain matchups, uh, such as Gardevoir, Greninja, um, all kinds of matchups, just anything that and everything that is ability reliant, and also just taking away top of Lele play. Just so big in the mid to late game when players are relying on Lele to bail them out with a supporter and not having it available to them. Such a powerful card, even with Field Blower in the format. So for Trubbish, obviously, the breakthrough version, which Ray EG chose to run, I agree with that completely. I think that is the superior version to run right now. But 3-1 uh, Garb Split, pretty much what we've been seeing in a lot of decks outside of the Galissapod variants, which I will touch base on later this week. Um, then we have a lot of one ofs. We have a Tapu Koko promo, Flying Flip for two colorless, 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, incredible value for a double colorless. And on top of that, this is a basic Pokemon with 110 HP and has no retreat cost. So a lot of decks even not intending to use Flying Flip all that much, if ever, taking advantage of this card solely because it is a decent sized single prize basic Pokemon. Pretty big actually for a one prize basic and a free retreat available. So the Lissapod decks love this card, uh, Decidueye decks love this card, all kinds of different decks being able to take advantage of it. And then we have the big spread master himself, Necrozma GX, probably my favorite card in the format going forward, especially post-rotation. And Galissapod, or sorry, Galissapod, Necrozma with a neat ability, not sure how useful it is, but lights and preventing all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from colorless Pokemon. So in the Mega Rayquaza matchup, if they fail to find a Hex Maniac, it, this can sit there for a turn or two. Next, you have Prismatic Burst for three colorless, which deals 10 damage, plus uh, forcing you to discard all Psychic Energy from Necrozma, and then you deal 60 more damage for every energy you discard. So with three Psychic, you bomb those to the sinkhole, and you hit 190 damage, 220 with a choice band. Absolutely brutal. And then, of course, the star of the show is Black Ray GX, dealing 100 damage to every one of your opponent's Pokemon EX and Pokemon GX. Not applying weakness and resistance, even to the active Pokemon, that is very important. If something is psychic weak, like, say, another Necrozma, that you will not deal 200 damage to an active opposing Necrozma or anything else that is psychic weak. Because it does not hit 
for weakness and resistance on anything, as opposed to only avoiding weakness and resistance on the bench. So that is uh, something to keep in mind, but just an incredible card and outstanding attack. And what better way to take advantage of spread damage than with Espeon EX, the one colorless Miraculous Shine, devolving each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon and putting the highest stage back into their hand against decks like Gardevoir GX or anything that is heavily evolution-based with the GX Pokemon or even uh, the Mega EX evolutions. Just forcing... The, uh, the big evolutions back in your opponent's hand and getting knockouts off of the uh, de-evolution and the, uh, the lower evolutions or the basic Pokemon or Stage 1s not having as much HP as the amount of damage you've laid on them before using this. And just such a brutal attack. Uh, we've seen this, again, in Decidueye primarily, and such a powerful card. So Espeon EX, of course, uh, just... Kind of a no-brainer inclusion for Reiichi. Such a creative deck, though. I absolutely love this. And then, as if the Espeon Garbodor matchup wasn't good enough already, you have Mewtwo for two Psychic Energy, dealing 20 damage plus 20 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. A watered-down, just weaker version of the Psychic Attack seen on Espeon GX, but on a 130 HP basic single prize Pokemon. Not an attack to scoff at. And then... Uh, that's, uh, again, that's just another great out to have in the Espeon matchup, or in a potential Mirror match, maybe, even. So, uh, an interesting pool of Pokemon to have. We do have three top of the to round it out. Wonder Tag being kind of the cornerstone of, and the reason anyone runs this card. Energy Drive, a very, very powerful attack, has been since the original Mewtwo EX's X-Fall. And uh, dealing 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon for a double color was definitely still a very powerful attack in the TCG. So that is our Pokemon lineup. We get into our items. We have four versus Seekers, four Ultra Balls, nothing too crazy there. Then we have two Rescue Stretchers to get our Pokemon back, either one to hand or three to the deck. Two Field Blowers to help increase the number of item cards in your opponent's discard pile primarily, as well as deal with stuff like Choice Band, and being able to do that to make Garbodor stronger. And then two Enhanced Hammers. Uh, we've seen a lot of Rainbow Energy and Double Colorless Energy resurfacing this weekend, so it was a great call on Reiji's part, putting a pair of Enhanced Hammers and combating a lot of decks that running these Special Energy cards and relying so heavily on them. So that is uh, our, our main item lineup. We do have our Pokemon tools. We have four Floatstones, the maximum number to keep not only Garbotoxin activated, but to make sure that we can retreat at will pretty much whenever we want. Uh, three Choice Bands as well to help buff damage coming from Trash Lanch or Energy Drive or even uh, Flying Flip on the opponent's active Pokemon. Just a great, uh, really uh, kind of a fun card to be able to use that on as well. Supporter-wise, we have four Sycamore, three N, and two Guzma. Just, again, becoming the norm. Guzma replacing Lysander in pretty much every deck. Some players opting to do a 1-1 one -one split. A lot of these decks just going straight to Guzma. And again, with those four Floatstones, it is easy to be able to retreat right out of it, as well as the top of Coco having free retreat. Then we have some one-of supporters around. We have Acerola, and then we have Teammates, of course, with Garbodor, just such a powerful card. Ninja Boy, and the big thing here is Ninja Boy into Necrozma is just bonkers. A lot of people not seeing that coming if they're not aware of Necrozma being in the deck. You can set up a Lele, get some early energy drive attacks off, and then Ninja Boy into Necrozma and uh, turn around and use Black Ray. You could also use it to bring a Trubbish into play and then immediately evolve into Garbodor. So some interesting things you could do there. And then, of course, the Cornerstone supporter for any deck that runs Evolutions right now, Bridget, being able to pull three uh, basic non-EX Pokemon from the deck, or the 1EX, pretty much never going to do the 1EX. So you're going to get uh, Trubbish's Tapu Koko, you could grab Necrozma or Mewtwo, depending on your matchup or position. Most of the time you're wanting to do this on turn one with Tapu Lele, so just so many options to have. And then our energy spread, we have four double colorless, of course. So compatible with so many things in this deck. And then seven psychic. Uh, forgive me, I only have six secret rare psychics in this game right now. So we've got this one, which looks pretty cool. Um, that's going to be number seven. 
So that is Reiji's list, and we are going to go ahead and try to see if we can make it work as well as he did. So let's get into some games. All right, so we are getting into a game here, and I see Grass and then our two types, Lightning and Psychic. So that could very well be a, like a Vika Volt Bulu or, I don't know, maybe some last-ditch Decidueye deck running atop of Coco Promo, um, any number of different ways. So we did a pretty okay hand here. We have Sycamore, we have Ultra Ball for Lele, which can get us Bridget. We have the Trubbish Start, which is pretty solid. Um, and if we are in the right matchup, maybe we'll even use that Mewtwo. So we see a Grass Energy Nest Ball. This looks a lot like the, uh, the John Roberts Vika Volt Bulu list from the North American Intercontinental Championships, at least based on that hand. Of course, with Guzma added, but we'll see where it ends up. So he flips over a Tapu Lele. That's a, that's a Ghost Rare one, or whatever you want to call it. Um, Rainbow, Hyper, Hologram, I don't care. So he's just going to play an end. So we did get that extra card off the mulligan. So that's going to lead into an N here, and we, well, we still have Ultra Ball for Bridget. We don't really have much else, though, which is a little scary. We may actually have to make a different play. We do have Ninja Boy, which could get um, a rather ideal attacker out, should we prefer a different one, since obviously Garbodor is not great in the early game, but maybe we could get Garbotoxin out. Either way, I think this is just going to turn into... Let's see, we can discard uh, Garbodor, and one of these Psychic Energies should be fine. And I think we actually just end up playing to an end here, unfortunately. So we can see what we have prized here real quick. Let's see. Looks like we prized our, our uh, Garbotoxin, actually, which sucks. Uh, looks like we got a Field Blower in the prize card. Let's see what we have in hand. I'm sure I'll screw that up. Looks like there is a Versus Seeker in the prizes. Um, a Professor Sycamore seems to be hanging out over there. A Floatstone. Let's see, five, six, seven, um, a double colorless, it looks like. I have no idea if I just named six cards. I believe I did, based on what else I'm seeing in here. But it looks like that, that looks like that's our prize cards. So that's, um, that's pretty okay. It's not terrible. Uh, obviously, the Garbotoxin being in there kind of sucks if this is uh, on top of Bulu. But otherwise, I'm not too, too concerned. Based on what we have here, um, we can also attach this double colorless energy really to either one of these Pokemon, actually. There's not really any immediate threat. If we do put it on the Trubbers, we risk getting bombed out by uh, Tapu Lele, so I think we will just put it on Lele here. And then go ahead and play this N. So, we don't find much. Um, we do find the, the Floatstone here, which is probably like the one saving grace. Um, not really a whole lot else going on in this hand. Uh, we do have Versus Seeker, so we can play N again. We do have an Ultra Ball. We have the Float Stone, like I said, to be able to bring Trubbish back. Um, we do see another Tapu Koko comes down onto this bench. Two Tapu Koko promos. And there is a Grass Energy on top of Lele, and he's got a Lily for only two cards. That is not what you want to be doing, I feel like. So I'm pretty okay with that. Um, draw Teammates, which is a dead card at the moment. Probably just going to be Ultra Ball fodder. Uh, we already discarded one Garbodor, not really wanting to do that again, so uh, we'll go ahead and pitch the teammates, and I think we toss the Field Blower here. The rest of these cards are pretty useful, I think, right now. So I'm going to go ahead and see, we can Verse Seeker for an N. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, grab the Top of Coco out of the deck, and we can put that into play, attach a Float Stone, and we can just evolve into Garbodor here. Um, that seems like a pretty solid play. Not doing a ton of damage right now, but it's still pretty okay. We are going to get this end with no cards left in hand. So only wishing that was a Sycamore, but not really regretting not pulling another Lele here. Um, we do find another Trubbish, which is good. So, looks like that's going to be our current board state. Now we could bring out Tapu Lele and try to do 60 damage here. Uh, try to soften something up, uh, soften up this Lele. We could get hit back for as much as 130 with a double colorless and a choice band, which is a little concerning. Um, not really sure I want to open myself up to that right now, so I think I'm just going to retreat to the top of Coco and go ahead and pass the turn. Uh, we do want to watch out how much damage exactly I put on the board right now, because I, I, and now a third top of Coco. He's going to play an end, so that's good. Um, and we probably should turn off that sound. Don't want to be hearing the beeping noises throughout the back. 
And so he puts a Wimpod down, so this is going to be a Glissopod variant, it looks like, which is not good for Trashalange. Um, presents a bit of an awkward matchup, at least to, well, to say the least. And now we have the option to Ninja Boy here, but I just don't really know what I would want a Ninja Boy into in this scenario. We could get, if Coco wasn't on the board, we could get Lele off the board to put Tapu Coco on and start spreading some damage. Um, spreading here would definitely be an ideal thing to be able to do, but not having access right now to Double Colorless on that Tapu Coco is definitely hurting. And, of course, teammates being a dead card right now, because I really don't think he's drawing too much. So, I think it is just going to be another N, unfortunately. The timer is beginning to prompt me there, so can't be sitting around for too much longer. So, I think we're just going to end this hand back in. Not going to worry about putting that Floatstone down right now. We still do not find the double colorless. Ugh. Oh, that's, that just sucks on so many levels. We do get Choice Band. In fact, we get a lot of them. We have the one off uh, Psychic Energy here. I'm just going to throw that there because, again, that doesn't really do much. But I'm just going to sit on those Choice Bands for now. can probably throw one on the top of Coco, I guess. But it looks like that thing's just going to get bopped by Glissapod here because... And another top of Lele comes down. Oh, jeez. We may actually see a Guzma coming out of this. And, yep, that, that's going to be it. So we are going to get hit with Guzma. And <laughs> let's see where he goes. He goes straight for the Garbodor. I am more than okay with that. I, we give up a prize, and we don't have access to teammates here, which does suck. But we only give up the... It's only one prize card. We have lots of stuff. We just need to be able to uh, kind of piece it together here. And Versus Seeker, actually. That is a huge top deck. Ending him would not lower his hand count at all. So I think we are just going to go ahead and make a teammates play here. Seems like a pretty solid move to have available. We can get a double colorless energy... And Necrozma eventually looks like a pretty solid option to have here, too. We do have um, Ninja Boy still in the deck, which is important because we have three Versus Seekers already down. So Ninja Boy into Necrozma could be a brutal move. But we will have teammates here. Now Mewtwo is not really going to be doing much here. Tapu Koko's spread may be worth something, uh, even if we end up giving up that energy right afterwards. Um, Enhanced Hammer's not going to do anything here. Um, but I think getting a double colorless is definitely a solid play to have on hand. And then after that, I really, I really don't know what, where I want to go from here. Like, we could go Psychic Energy Ninja Roy for next turn and try to set up on the Krozma and then Espeon EX and devolve this, these Glissopods or Biscos. God, he's playing all these Ghost Rares. It's tough to tell. But I don't really think I want to burn that combo when I only have one thing to hit it with. It just does not feel like a good use of it, and I really don't know what to pick here. Time is definitely a pressing issue right now. So I think we just take another Trubbish, honestly. Like, there's just not a lot of decisions here. We can definitely throw that down, and we do have the double colorless energy that can go down, and we have the choice band, so we can get some significant damage across his board. 50 damage on the active Galissapod, 20 damage on everything on his bench, so a grand total of 150 just for a double colorless. And playing more Tapu Kokos would be an interesting idea to uh, kind of tinker with, I think, in this deck for some of these matchups like Galissapod or even Gardevoir, where the Garbodor using Trash Lance just does not do anything. You do see he plays an Escape Rope here, and if he does follow that up with a Guzma, that is really going to suck. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, I'm just going to bring this Trubbish up, but I'm going to... Basically just figure, I mean, he can kind of pick and choose whatever he wants if he has Guzma. He can also just uh, bring Coco out, retreat it, and then just attack into the active. I think it, a lot of that depends on what we bring up trying to read into his plays. So, if he has the Guzma, I definitely, there's no way you don't make him use his resources here. And instead we see Acerola, so he picks up a Tapu Lele. Now, he'll be able to reuse that, obviously, but... The fact that he ace a roll of Lele and not a uh, not a Galissapod, that I feel like that at least partially has to be a victory. We get a rescue stretcher here, so we can shuffle back. Uh, we can shuffle back one of the Garbodors and both of the Trubbishes here, because we do have Garbotoxin somewhere in the prize cards. Would love to be able to take advantage of that. Put a choice band here on top of Lele. 
It only has the one item in here. So again, not a whole lot of options. We can end, draw back up to six cards. Now, Lele here could do one, two, three, four, five, six, 120, 150. It would, oh, it would come up just short. Um, it would come up 10 short. And I, and the problem is you do that, you come up 10 short, and then he plays an Ace Arola and picks up the Galissapod, and I, I feel like I would just cry in that scenario, so... Um, maybe just put this Psychic Energy here, we could Lele for Necrozma, and make some big stuff happen. We will fly and flip here. So, we will get some damage down, and a Ninja Boy into Necrozma is very much on the table for next turn. We do see a third energy goes on to... Galissapod, and there is Crossing Cut GX that bombs Tapu Koko. He switches into his own Koko now. Again, Necrozma is going to end up a little bit short of a knockout here. Now, we could Guzma and just knock it out with Tapu Lele, and that might actually be the better play here. So, I think we actually promote the Trubbish here. And we top deck the Ninja Boy. Go figure. Now... Again, not a lot of options, but I think we will Lele here for the Guzma. And that will give us some options. And then I also think I'm going to go ahead and throw that Double Colorless on the Trubbus just to get it ready so we have another Ninja Boy uh, target available. So uh, the other option would be to use Espeon EX here to just de-evolve this. But again, only getting one knockout out of that I feel like is not that big of a deal. We can just knock it out with Tapu Lele. So we're just going to bring, we're going to Guzma, we're going to bring Lele into the picture, and then we are going to go ahead and throw this energy here. And we will use Energy Drive to finish off the Lissapon GX and claim a couple of prize cards. Now he's got Tapu Koko's all up and down his board. We do find the Trash, or sorry, not Trash, it's the Garbotoxin, the relevant Garbodor. Even in a matchup like this where he doesn't seem to have very many abilities. You see another Galissapod come down. He's got max rarity everything almost, except for ends here. I guess, well, I guess Ace Roll and Escape Rope maybe, I don't know. He's got a lot of Ghost Rares. And we are going to lose that Trubbish here, it looks like. He isn't even going to bother with uh, Galissapod. He's just going to use Energy Drive. Now we're doing 130, another double colorless. Actually, we don't even need it. We're doing 130 here, which is just enough to knock this thing out. Unfortunately, we don't have an end, but we should be able to pull one with um, with the Tapu Lele, and we would have three Lele's on the board. Um, so, let's see, there are two ends down there, so there should be one more still in the deck as we use that third copy of Tapu Lele. We're only dropping his hand size by one card, though, so that is, uh, that is something to be wary of, since there is a Galissapod on his bench, which, of course, he can just use the uh, Tapu Koko to immediately retreat into. But we're going to force him to hit that energy card. And not really sure that I want to put Espeon on. It's not really doing much right now. But we can pick up a KO, and I really don't see a way that he can respond with a knockout on his turn. Unless he had, like, a Choice Band, an Energy, and a Professor Kikui, you would basically have to hit everything just perfectly. Basically, if you don't have a perfect hand, then you won't be returning this knockout. And we do have an interesting option here. We could uh, try to retrieve Tapu Koko. But again, not really sure how important that is just right now. So, I don't know. I guess it does give us a pretty good Let's go ahead and bring Tapu Koko back to hand. Garbodors aren't really too relevant. So we can just bring Tapu Koko back. And that will set us up for an energy drive, which will knock out Tapu Lele. Return that attack. <laughs> and tie the game at two prizes, putting us in a pretty favorable spot again, because I really don't think he could pick up this knockout. And that would put us... That would uh, that would create an interesting scenario. We do have another double colorless that could threaten an even larger attack from Tapu Lele next turn, 130 prior to any energy on his side. And he drops a bursting balloon and passes, so that is, uh, that is an unexpected card, to say the very least. And now we have the option to go into Necrozma here with that gorgeous Ninja Boy top deck. And that may be the play here, since I'm really not wanting to hit into that Bursting Balloon, but I hate to use Necrozma and only hit one Pokemon. He just does not seem to have much else, though, so we can try to capitalize. We don't really, the problem is we don't really have anything else to go into here, 
Um, it may actually just be better to pass this turn. Taking 60 would open us up to a Galissapod knockout, which is the worst possible scenario, it would appear. Um, and again, we could Necrozma here to get a 100 snipe damage, which could turn into a knockout with Espeon. So I think even though it is not optimal, I think this is still going to be the play. Ninja Boy into Necrozma GX. And we can throw an energy on another top of Lele here. But keep an eye on these double colorless. That is our fourth one. So Ace Arola would be a thing. I'll go ahead and throw a Choice Band over there. And Black Ray GX. We're going to hit that, that uh, Glissapod for 100. Force maybe an Ace Arola to come down. And okay, he's going to use a Max Potion. All right. Well, we are starting to see a couple of items. There's a Field Blower. So there's another one. We are seeing a few items start to hit the board hit the discard pile on his end, and nothing else, really. So, we do not have a Trubbish, however. That sucks. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That sucks. But maybe we can uh, find one off a of Ninja Boy, uh, off a of Verse Seeker. We should have one Verse Seeker left. Um, and we can also just try charging up another top of Lele here. Um, seems like that can be a pretty decent option to have. And what are we down now? Free choice? Okay, that's all of our choice games. Don't really want to pay this retreat cost, though. So we're going to go ahead and use the Floatstone. And... Alright, so we do find a Trubbish. So that's good. I put that into play. And Tapu Lele is going to come up just short of this Naga. We could kill him with Prismatic Burst. And that would put us one away. Maybe we should have put it. Well, no, we would have just lost the site if we put it there. So I guess we go ahead. Yeah, we use Prismatic Burst. We pick up this knockout. That drops us to one prize. Now, we are a Guzma away from this from this win, which is in our hand as well as a Burst Seeker. He has one in hand, two after his draw. And, yeah, all right. And there is the scoop. So not a pretty win by any means. That is probably not a matchup we want to see. Definitely understandable how EG may have ended up losing to Galissapod in top 8. It does not present itself as a great matchup, but Necrozma coming through with Prismatic Burst rather than uh, Black Ray, which Black Ray just ended up drawing a Max Potion, which I guess is okay in some scenarios, but probably not the most we want to see out of it. But we will get into game number 2 now with Reiji's top 8 World Championship deck. All right, so we see a lot of similar types to that last round. We may be seeing another Galissapod deck here, which, I mean, it's a little bit of an awkward matchup. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, it's a matchup I wish I had more Tapu Cocos in, like I said, during that last game. So who knows? But we do have Necrozma right off the bat. I don't know if that's something I want to show my opponent right away. He does have a Mulligan. And we do see Super Scoob Up and Forest of Giant Plants. Oh my god. Alright, so this is not going to be a Galissapod deck, I don't think. It is still possible. I mean, I guess you could run Super Scoob Up with it. Obviously, Forest is compatible. But, I don't know. This almost makes me want to put the Necrozma down solely because I feel like we could just get donked by a Decidueye Rush. But, if that happens, I'm just going to bite the bullet, I think. <laughs> you see that all-important Tapu Coco promo, a card that really is being used, I think, in some decks just because they run the double color list, and more importantly, it has free retreat. It's a 110 HP single prize basic Pokemon with a two, with a double color list compatible attack and a free retreat cost. But here we see, oh, all of the Galissapods hitting the discard pile off a of Sycamore. Two Galissapod GX and a regular Galissapod, which has, it's a pretty nifty card. It takes 30 less damage from attacks on it by its ability. It's for 80 for 3, and if it is a GX or EX, it hits, it goes up to 150, with a Choice Band would hit 180, which is brutal. We do have this Bridget now, so we're going to go ahead and try to make something happen here. We do not have a Float Stone, though. That does kind of suck, just a little bit. I'm not going to lie about that. But, um, again, I think we're okay. He had a pretty ugly Sycamore. Um, maybe we'll see a Revitalizer. Hopefully that is not in combination with a Guzma, because I really would like to start spreading some damage here. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. He can't always just retreat and maybe get Galissapod GX attacking. Instead we see an N. Okay, so we're not going to see Guzma here. That's, uh, that's a sigh of relief. Uh, Necrozma can safely go back to the deck. I'm not too worried about that right now. 
We do see Galissapod GX come down, and he will be able to retreat, knock out the Trubbish. Again, I'm perfectly okay with that. It's not really a problem in my eyes. And if we do spread the damage a bit more as opposed to um, just laying into a, a heavy hit and trying to get a two-hit knockout on this Galissapod, that could deter the Super Scoop Up's effectiveness a bit, too. He's got, like, looks like, yeah, only one item. So we will go ahead and put this into play, but I don't know how useful it's going to be just yet. Um, we have the option of rescue stretchering here. Again, I'm not really too sure that that needs to be a thing right now. I think we can actually just discard it. Um, and we could find Tapu Lele here to go for a Sycamore. Uh, we could also just go for the end here, which I think is probably the better play. Could try to get Necrozma going. Could also get Garbotoxin online. So many decisions. Um, and I think we do actually go for... Do we go for the Garbotoxin here? Oh, it seems just a little bit awkward. Um, yeah. I think we, I mean, that's nice trash Yeah, I, Oh my god, this is, this is a very awkward scenario. I think, yeah, I think I am just going to go ahead and grab this Necrozma. Can't rely on hitting Ninja Boy every game. I probably should have checked for my prizes too. That was a little bit of a boneheaded mistake. Um, had a couple opportunities to do that because we did bridge it as well. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to drop this end here. And we do find both Garbodors. We also find a Choice Band, which seems like a pretty legit play here. We'll get an Energy down. We could Choice Band now, which seems like it might be okay. We could also just wait till next turn. <coughs> I don't think I'm going to drop the other Garbodor just yet. Um, I think I'm actually just going to play Flying Flipping here. And maybe we even see the Crossing Cut GX this turn, which would knock out Tapu Koko. Uh, we do have one of our stretchers, of course, already gone from the last turn. We see Bridget here, so probably going to see a couple of Wimpods hit the board. Maybe a Trubbish? Nope, looks like Wimpod and Oranguru is going to come out. And there's gonna, that's going to be Crossing Cut right there. We do see he puts the Forest into play here as well. So crossing cut, oh, armor press actually, he's actually going to, alright, so he's not going to take the knockout. Interesting decision there, and that gives Tapu Koko another chance to lay down a hit. So, let's see, again, only one item card, not, uh, oh, that's just not good. Now, we could maybe try to trap this Oranguru up front and keep spreading some damage. The problem here being that we give him access to first impression, but with only 10 HP left, I'm not overly concerned about that, so I think we will go ahead, retreat, and then Guzma, drag up this Oranguru that has a two retreat cost, and force him to commit a double colorless or a flowstone to that. And that's just going to put us in a spot where we can flying flip again and spread some more damage. And if we can get that Galissapod up to even, uh, up to 70 damage would be the magic number without him drawing it back to his hand with a Super Scoop Up or an Ace of Ola. We'd be in a pretty good spot now. He is going to Ultra Ball, presumably, for a Tabu Lele. And he misses! Oh, man. Okay, never. Okay, maybe he just chose to fail the search. You see, he is going to Professor Sycamore. Now, he will need a Revitalizer or a Rescue Stretcher or something to get those uh, Galissapods back. He only has the one. Of course, he gets Super Scoop up here, which, unfortunately, is going to be a heads. So that Galissapod is going to jump back to his hand and then... After a fresh Sycamore, another Super Scoop Up. He misses this one, presumably going for the Oranguru that time. You see Galissapod come back onto the board. And Wimpod as well. Much to be expected to see, I assume, a Grass Energy going onto the Wimpod. But he chooses... Oh, he may have actually just attached this one this turn. Um, so, this is going to give us another turn of Flying Flip. We do see two Super Scoop Ups and Ultra Ball, all hitting the discard that turn, so that puts his discard item count up to four, and I think I'm comfortable putting another Trash Lance Garbodor in play with that having happened. So we can do that, we can attach the uh, Choice Band, we can Ultra Ball away these two, and just, I don't know that there's anything I really want here, I think we just, yeah, go ahead, you might as well. And, again, probably should have checked for what else is available, but we do end up with a fresh hand, and that, is, that means an energy is going onto Necrozma this turn. And we will go ahead and Flying Flip again. We still need a bit more, uh, bit more work put in spread-wise. 
or just in general on those on the Galissapod. We do see Ace Arola here is going to pick up his Orangaroo. So our Tapu Koko is probably going to bite the dust on the heels of his flying flip this turn. And so we're going to be left bringing up Garbodor. And we do see, yeah, he is at still four item cards in his discard pile. No Pokemon tools for us to Field Blower. Don't really think the Guzma is that necessary. I think we just take his energy off the board here. We do have another energy to go onto the other Garbodor. And maybe we play an N here and try to drop his hand count down. We could also Field Blower away the... Um, the Forest of Giant Plants, which might not be a bad idea just to get a card out of our hand. That we presumably don't want to be drawing off of this end, since I have not seen anything that really scares me in terms of uh, Pokemon tools yet. don't even think he's played one as of right now. And we draw, <laughs> we draw the two Enhanced Hammers, so... I mean, if we, I guess if we weren't taking a knockout here, the Enhanced Hammer wouldn't be too shabby. But since we are going to take a KO... Um, I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think we even bother. I mean, I guess we could play one just so we don't draw it later, but he does have those double colorless in his deck, obviously. And we may be able to knock one down later on, so we will trash lanch here. Pick up a knockout on Tapu Koko. Get his energy off the board, and we do find a Trubbish out of the prize cards. So if he takes another KO here with Galissapod, then we would be in a scenario where we could end him to three... But not really much else going at that point. Maybe we lay a Trash Lance down and then look for Necrozma to uh, try to lay down a big blow next turn. He will go down to three prizes, though, here. So we will be able to end him out of uh, down two cards from where he's at right now. And then lay an attack onto this Galissapod. And we draw another Tapu Lele. So only one Trash Lance, just uh, Garbodor, in the discard pile. And kind of wishing I would have played one of those Enhanced Hammers now. But I guess that's why we play and learn. So we're going to Versus Seeker here. We're going to go ahead and pluck this N. Probably could have Lele for one out of the deck as well. And we're going to go ahead and shuffle this garbage back into the deck. And not finding a whole lot. We do find the, uh, the teammates, which is big. We also find a Choice Band, so we could increase our damage output here. I'll uh, see, he's got four, so we're doing 80. That would put him 90 damage away from a knockout. We could set it up to where Necrozma could even use Prismatic Burst again by using the Choice Band. So I think in this scenario, we probably still would save the Choice Band for the next round, just in case he does play an Acerola or a Super Scoop Up with a Head Split, as those would just erase the damage, so you might as well save it for the next round. You see a Rangaroo is going to come back onto the board. There is the double colorless energy. Another Wimpod. And he's going to instruct here for a couple of cards. Try to find a supporter. Just really hoping he does not find Guzma to knock out Necrozma. But instead we're going to see an armor press here. So that's going to reduce the damage he takes by 20. Which is a big deal because Necrozma now ends up out of OHKO range with both attacks. Which is just, oh, that, that hurts. He didn't put any more items in his discard pile either. So finding that enhanced hammer now might be a uh, pretty relevant strategy. We could even go for an acid spray. Because, um, again, not a whole lot of plays going on our way here. Um, I think we do have to bring this up regardless. And we do have teammates available as well as the end. We do find the enhanced hammer, though, off the top of the deck. So that's going to get rid of his double colorless energy. And we do have teammates available. Um, he has four items in here, so 80 damage could go up to 110, which would then come down to 90 and be enough to KO him. So if we go here and get the trash Avalanche this turn, which I think has to be the play, then with the Choice Band, we get a KO. And that's going to finish off this Galissapod, even with the Armor Press defense. And that's going to put us in a spot here where, again, I'm not really sure where this is ultimately going to go. We still have three prizes to go here, and he's pretty much still in the driver's seat. We had to mount a comeback last game, likely we'll have to do so again in this game. 
one thing that is comforting is seeing all of those Galissapods in his discard pile, waiting on the Rescue Stretcher, or more likely the Revitalizer, to appear. And you see an Ultra Ball, so he's going for a Lele. You gotta assume he... I don't know, he just discarded two Versus Seekers there, too. Goes for a Wimpod, assuming he has a Supporter or another Seeker. Also has Instruct here to pick up a couple of cards. So, we'll see... He's gotta have something. Yeah, there's the Sycamore, because he wouldn't discard two Versus Seekers if he did not have something going for him there. So, Sycamore is gonna net him, net him seven more cards, and if he gets the Revitalizer, the Lissapod will wipe out the Garbodor and leave us crying. Instead, he brings up the Wimpod with no energy. And that is interesting. That, uh, not a good sign for him to have off of a seven-card Sycamore. We do see a Choice Band, another Choice Band, just begging for a Field Blower here. And we draw another copy of Enhanced Hammer. But again, he didn't draw much. <laughs> not a whole lot on my opponent's side, so debating here, do we go for the N and put both of us down at a very low count, or I'm thinking I might actually just go for the Sycamore here. It is still a little scary to think about uh, getting just blown out of the water next turn. He has not used Crossing Cut, and a Guzmo would just spell disaster. So we may actually have to go that route. Uh, we are knocking out the Wimpod. So if we put him down to two cards, let's see how many Sycamores we have in here. Only one. Okay, I'm okay discarding him. And not enough damage to make Espeon really worth it. Um, maybe we go for a Lele here. Um, again, I'm not really too sure. May actually just fail this search. Just get some cards we don't want to redraw. Get them out of there. Put the Floatstone down. Put the energy on the Necrozma and end him down. Now he is going to be able to get at least up to three off his draw for the turn, or of course he would have a Rangaroo. We find a Lele and a Sycamore, and this is going to be a KO right here. This is going to put us down to two prize cards. And 140 damage now coming off of that. I'm hoping he does not have a Guzma, Galissapod, and a double colorless. As that would effectively end. He doesn't even need the double colorless. A Guzma and a Galissapod would end the game. So there's an Ultra Ball. Discards an N and an Acerola, going for a Lele here, I would assume. He didn't do it last time, but it's got to happen eventually. And he could get a Sycamore out of the deck and draw a fresh 7. He fails his search. And how many Leles do you run, buddy? Really wondering that right now. I saw that Psychic type in the types that are in your deck. I assume you're running at least two. See a Super Scoop up here. He's going to pick up the Orangaroo. It takes a Guzma target away, but he's also going to use it to draw another card, actually. Not too bad. Put it down, use Instruct again, draw one more card. There is a Versus Seeker. <sighs> so that's going to grab him a Professor Sycamore. And that is three Seekers. Now, tons of items down, but it doesn't matter because our, our uh, Garbodor is likely just going to bite the dust right here. And we will be looking to play an end here. He attaches Grass Energy to Tapu Koko. There is Wimpod in the active. But he didn't evolve it. So, again, we're looking at a scenario where Wimpod look at, you know, looks to be a bit of a sacrificial lamb here. And we can play another end. Which, even with a Rangaroo, I'm not too uncomfortable with playing the end here just because... Again, I feel like it's one of those scenarios where we can just try to uh, put him at to lock him at three cards, and we can search the deck, see what's left. Uh, not really anything I don't that I think I want to play. We already have Necrozma down as a uh, potential loss option if he hits everything. So I don't think we need anything. It's just getting another Pokemon onto the board another potential attacker, and then we will end him down once again and take another knockout with Garbodor. And if this Garbodor goes the distance, then holy cow. We do get Espeon EX, which is not a card we want to see, but we also get Double Colorless, which is a very welcome card for this situation. Tapu Lele can have that energy, and we will attack yet again. 220 damage now coming off of that Trash Land. That is a lot of damage. 11 item cards. The choice band makes it 12. 
and he needs to knock this Garbodor out now if he wants a chance of winning. We see a field blower taking presumably the two float stones. Yep. And so how many is that now? That is okay. That's only two. But we are out of versus seekers. That's something that's worth noting. That won't matter if he can't knock this Garbodor though. Super scoop up. Another head, so he's going to get that Orangaroo back. Puts it down, has the Floatstone with it, and he'll get at least one. Now two more cards. He's got the Choice Band as well. So Instruct will get him two more here. Digging, 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 digging for that Revitalizer. And he's got five cards left in his deck after doing that. How many Revitalizers do you play, buddy? There's a Lele, okay. You can't exactly Sycamore here. You could Guzma. And he, oh, so, okay, so he's going to end us down to one, but again, if you don't hit that knockout, the game is over. So he ends us to one, we get a Psychic Energy. There's an Energy on Lele, but what are you going to do here? He passes his turn, so we will take the win with trash -a -Lanch. And that's the last prize, and it, again, it did not matter what he brought up. There were simply too many items in the discard pile. And Garbodor goes the distance in an awkward matchup. A little bummed about not getting to showcase Necrozma a little bit more, but I will have more, more Necrozma coming your way once I've finished uh, covering a couple of more Worlds decks. Uh, it is probably, quite possibly, like I said, my favorite card in the format going forward with the post-rotation. Uh, works so beautifully with cards like Tapu Koko, Espeon EX, Metagross GX, uh, and Expanded with Trevenant and then Trevenant Break. Uh, the Tapu Lele promo, if and when that ever gets released. Um, obviously another huge player, a huge partner for Necrozma. Just so many things you can do with it against so many of the top decks in the format. And he really trying to avoid that Necrozma the entire game, and we saw what happened is he was not putting Tapu Lele's on the board for whatever reason to avoid Necrozma or maybe just because he couldn't find them. But that is Keiichi's uh, top eight worlds deck. Uh, congratulations to him for making top eight uh, and representing his home country of Japan. I love these Japanese decks. They're just so interesting, so different from what we were used to seeing here in the United States. And uh, congratulations to everyone who competed in the world championships. This weekend, it was a lot of fun to watch the stream. I look forward to being there in Nashville with all of you guys next year. Uh, very, very close to where I live. Only a short, like a five or six hour drive. So very attainable. Uh, invite or no invite, I will be there. So um, already looking forward to that, even though it is a year in the making and we have an entire season still to build up towards hopefully getting that precious world's invite. So. Uh, that is all for today. I will see you guys next time with another Worlds deck. There are at least two more that I am looking to cover. Still need to get the list for one of them. But I will see you guys on the flip side. Cheers!